subscribe to RA Solutions by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking on the bell icon to receive notifications. Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we will be applying three different functions, which are the min, max and average functions. We will be applying an if formula and also we will be looking at applying conditional formatting to this exam results spreadsheet. Now, this exam results spreadsheet shows you data on what scores pupils achieved in their latest exam. Column A here is their first name. Column B here is their surname. Column C here is what they achieved in their latest exam paper. Column D is whether they passed or failed. And we will be entering data in there to find whether they passed or failed. And in column E here is the actual pass grade they have achieved. So this could be, for example, a fail, a pass, a merit mark or a distinction mark. Now, this column here will be covered in my later videos. So in this video, we will be focusing on both column C and D. So the exam results column and whether they've passed or not column here. Now, let's say, for example, the spreadsheet had hundreds of pupils, names and scores on. It would take you a very long time as part of your data analysis to find what the lowest score was, what the highest score was, or what the average score was. The good thing about Microsoft Excel, you can use things called functions, which allow you to find specific pieces of information out. Now, what we are going to do in this first half of this video today is we're going to use three functions to find the lowest score, the highest score and what the average score was. Now you can see underneath the pupil scores table, we've got a section here to find what the minimum score is, what the maximum score is and what the average score is. And I've left this section blank because this is where we're going to use the function to put the information in. So we're going to focus first and foremost on finding the minimum score here. So the first thing I'm going to do is highlight this empty cell here. Now, to do this, we need to understand what the minimum or the min function does. So the min function finds the lowest value in a range of cells. So we'll be asking Excel to have a look at this range of cells here come back with results telling us which one is the lowest mark out of all these and the results will be presented in here. Now, to help us do this, we need to understand how formulas work. Now, the first thing you do when you do a formula and apply the min function to that formula is we type in equals in the keyboard like this or on the keyboard. Now, after that, what we do is we type in min. Now what we're doing is we're saying to Excel, we want to apply the min function to our formula. The next step to this particular formula is we need to type bracket open. And we need to say to Excel, we need to put in the range of cells we are going to use. So we're going to start off from the first value here, which is in column C, row four, which is C4. We're going to highlight it by clicking with your finger the, on the left mouse button. Then we're going to keep hold of the left mouse, mouse button with your finger. We're going to drag the cursor down until we reach that last score or that last value there, which is C23. Once, we've ha once we are happy with that, let go of the mouse button. And we can see Excel has started to write your formula for you in here. The next step to this is bracket closed on your keyboard. 
type in bracket closed and the final step here is just to click on enter on your keyboard. Now what Excel has magically done for you, it's used the min function and the formula you've provided and it's worked out from this range of cells which is the lowest number from this range of cells here. And that's not taken very long, has it? Now what we're going to do is we're going to go down and focus on finding the maximum score. We know already, looking at this list of 20 pupils, that the highest score on this spreadsheet looks like it's going to be 95, which is Daniel Burke. Um, a bit of a disclaimer here, the information, this pupil data, is dummy data. So in case of any GDPR issues, it is in fact test data for the purpose of this video. So let me go back and highlight my maximum score cell. What we're going to do now is apply the max function to find the highest value. We know what it is, but we're going to let Excel do its magic. Using these functions is particularly useful, especially in your data analysis, saving you time and effort trying to do things manually. You can do things automatically using functions and formulas. So the first thing we do again when we do a formula is equals. This time we're going to use a formula called max, M-A-X. And now you can see Excel has put different variations of the formula uh, function below. We're going to stick to the first one here, bracket open. Now what we want to do, we're going to select the same range of cells because those are all the scores. So click on the first one. Keep your finger on the left mouse button, scroll down like that. Let go of the left mouse button once you're happy. You notice again that Excel has populated the formula in there already. The next stage of this is to type in the close brackets and then press enter on your keyboard. And there you go, it's put that highest value or the highest score in the exam is 95. So these pupils took this exam and the highest score in the exam was 95 and the lowest score in the exam was 24. Really useful if you've got a spreadsheet with lots of data in there, this will save you a lot of time. The third function we're going to use today is simply called the average function. Now the average function when applied in this Excel spreadsheet will find the average score from this list of this list here, this range here. So again, the first thing we do when we do a formula is equals. We're going to type in the word average on your keyboard. Same process applies, bracket open. Then I'm going to select the range of cells I want, it, I want Excel to work out the average for. So you start off with the first score, keep your finger on the left mouse button, scroll down, let go of the left, um, left mouse button. And you can see already Excel's populated the formula for you. Bracket closed and enter. So the average score in this exam was 61.35. Okay, just over the pass mark if we have a look at the grade boundaries here in this lookup table. So that's a simple and effective way showing you how to add the min function to find the lowest value in a given range of cells. Use the max function to find the highest number in a given range of cells and use the average function to find the average value from a given range of cells. Now there is another way to apply these three functions in Microsoft Excel. So I'm going to show you the second way or the second method to do this. I'm going to delete whatever's in here. Click on the first empty cell where minimum score is. Now this is a far easier method than typing in the formula in manually. So you highlight the cell, scroll to the top to where the ribbon is. This is what you call a ribbon in Microsoft Excel. Make sure the home icon selected here at the top. Scroll to the right side. Under the editing section here, you just simply want to go 
to the right of where it says auto sum here. Sometimes in Excel you might just see this icon here. It depends what the layout of your Excel software is but mine says auto sum so even if you've just got this um, label here go to the right arrow or the arrow to the right of it which is pointing downwards click on the arrow and choose the function we want to apply so we want to apply because we're finding out the lowest score we want to apply the min function to this spreadsheet click on min and it will if you go back to your table go back to the formula it's already applied the formula in there for you making your jobs a lot easier than having to type the formula in manually so what we do simply is check the formula see if it's correct which it is click on enter and the lowest value has been put in there which is the minimum score in that exam click on the next cell where we're going to add the highest score the maximum value scroll to the top make sure the home option selected scroll to the right at the top in the ribbon um, where you'll find the editing section here make sure you found the auto sum label or the um, label for it here the icon for it click on the down arrow choose function max to find the highest value click on max and it will apply the max function here now the only difference here is it's also selected the value of the minimum score in the range which we don't want now there's a couple of ways you can alter the range within the formula we know the last value here that we want in the formula is in column C row 23 so we can simply go in and with our keyboards change that value from 24 to 23 and you can see already it selected the correct range that we need the other way to do this was go to the bottom right hand corner of the range until you see the black diagonal arrows keep your finger on the left mouse button and you can drag the range as you see fit can you see that you can drag the range as you see fit that's the correct range there once I'm happy let go of the left mouse button and just simply click on enter on your keyboard so 95 is the highest value there and it's changed accordingly now we're going to find the average score click on the average cell there go to the top to the ribbon make sure the home icon selection selected even scroll to the right under the editing section find the down arrow on the right of auto sum click on it scroll down until you found the average function there which it is click on average go back to your table and you can see the range it's added both minimum and maximum to your range of cells which we don't want so what I'm going to do this time is go to the bottom right hand corner until my cursor changes to the black diagonal arrows highlight with your left mouse button on your, with your finger scroll up until you um, selected the correct range of values there let go of the mouse button and then click on enter so that's two different ways showing you how to apply the min function the max function and the average function to your spreadsheet another good thing about this let's say you are moderating these exam scores and some of the scores have changed following the moderation let's say this 95 isn't in fact a 95 it's in fact an 85 something went wrong with the marking you can change the score there to 85 click off that cell and scroll down and you notice now the highest score um, in this exam has changed from 95 to 86 because that was the next highest figure or the new highest figure yeah so you it automatically these figures automatically change depending obviously depending on what figures what numbers are in these cells here now what we're going to do is move on to column D and figure out how to apply an if formula to column D here starting with the first one here now what we want is we want to ask it a question we want to ask Excel a question we want to say if this exam result is greater than the pass mark 
or greater or equal to the pass mark, that person has passed the exam. If it's not greater or equal to this past pass mark here, that person has failed that exam. So the way to do this is using an if formula. So we type in the first thing we do when we type in a formula is we type in equals. So it's going to, going to be equals. Then we type in if. The next stage in this if formula process is to type in bracket open. So what we're going to say is if this value, so I'm going to highlight the value to make it easy, is greater than, so we're going to use a sign or symbol for greater than, and we're going to say if it's greater than and equal to, if it's greater than and equal to, then we're going to scroll across to the pass mark here, click on it. So if this value is greater or equal to this value, now incidentally, what we need to do, we're going to add something called absolute cell referencing. Now what this means the formula will always reference against this particular cell here. We don't want it to scroll down and reference any other cell. We want it to reference this cell here all the time. Now, the way to add absolute cell referencing is what it's called just for your reference is before the M here, we add a dollar sign like this. And before the number four, we add another dollar sign. And that will apply an absolute cell referencing meaning if we use or copy that formula down to the other cells it will always reference against this cell no other cell so once we've added the dollars before the letter M and the number four we do comma and then we're gonna say if if that formula or if that value is greater or equal to the pass mark we're gonna say yes they've passed so quotes yes and if they haven't if that score isn't greater or equal to the pass mark they've failed so they haven't passed so we're going to do comma again quotes no so if they've passed it's a yes if they haven't it's a no if that if that result is greater or equal to, to 60 which is a pass mark they've passed if it's not they haven't passed so to end this formula, you simply do bracket closed and then you press enter. So this, this first pupil, we know 72 is greater or equal to 60, they've passed. The second person, however, let's do the formula again one more time manually. So equals if bracket open, we're gonna say if this value is greater or equal to this pass mark remember to add the dollar signs before the M to ensure it's always referencing this number here this value in this cell here dollar before the M dollar before the 4 so if it's greater or equal to M4 which is the pass mark of 60 comma yes they've passed quotes and if they if it's not greater or equal to they fail so comma no. So what we should get, because they haven't passed, because the number in that field or column or cell is lower than 60, it should come back with no uh, to suggest they haven't passed. So when we click on enter, it doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work, I will tell you, uh, let me just, I forgot to put the quotes in at Here like that okay so I, I forgot to put the quotes in but the good thing about Excel it's reminded me to correct the formula so click on enter there we have it now it will take you time to add formulas in the other cells here manually there is a quick way in Excel to do this so highlight the last time you use the formula which was this cell here once that cell has been highlighted go to the bottom right hand corner until you get the black cross put your finger on the left mouse button on your mouse like this and just simply drag 
your mouse or cursor down to the last um, exam result there and once you're happy let go of the mouse button and now we can see that spreadsheet has been populated with the correct um, values in there so this person here is it Raynard Tyler achieved 57 which is lower than the pass mark of 60 they haven't passed so that's a quick and easy way showing you how to use or apply if statements in your spreadsheet the next stage to this task is we are going to look at applying conditional formatting again this is really useful in your data analysis you can quickly see um, different cells highlighted in different colors depending on the values in there and that's exactly what we're going to do now so this task what we're going to do is apply conditional formatting to the pass column here column d so we're going to highlight all the values and what we're going to do we're going to tell excel that all the columns or sorry all the values that are that have got yes in them we want them to be highlighted in green and all the cells which have got no in them I want them to be highlighted in red so the way to do this hi highlight all the cells you want to be affected in this which is here then go to the home tab at the top scroll to the right side in your ribbon in the style section you will notice an option which says conditional formatting here click on that conditional formatting option then go it will open up a drop down menu in that drop down menu you want the first option highlight cell rules here now in highlight cell rules you will see a secondary drop down which opens I want, to, I want you to scroll down to where it says equal to. So equal to, that's what we're going to be working with. So click on equal to. What we want Excel to do is reference the cells and whichever cell is equal to yes, in this case, we want, you can see the cells automatically changing already we want the format of those cells to be instead of them being red we want to in this drop down here we want to change it to green you can also change the um, format of it by going to custom format for the purpose of this video I'm just going to leave it as green so green for good yeah so showing green all the green ones are all the pupils that have passed that exam once you're happy with that click on OK and then make sure the range is still highlighted which is which it is and we're going to do the exact same thing for those that are no um, but we're going to use red instead of green so go to the top again make sure the home tab selected scroll to the right side in your ribbon in the style section here click on conditional formatting in the drop down choose the first option highlight cell rules in the secondary drop down go down to equal to again in here it's asking you for your criteria again we're going to type in no here so we're going to format the cells which equal which are equal to no and look there it's automatically started to highlight all the ones that are no and we can choose the color so we can put them instead of them being red we're, we're, I'm going to change them to yellow here because we don't want them to be deflated if they have a look at their scores in the spreadsheet see the color red on there so click on OK and there we have it so particularly useful if you've got a spreadsheet you're doing data analysis you are looking at patterns to see how many pupils have passed how many have failed figuring out who you want to work with in the future where you want to add interventions and you can do this very quickly by using functions like the min function max function average function present data analysis to one to you your faculty your line manager whoever I've shown you how to add if formulas to your spreadsheet and also how to apply conditional formatting to your exam results spreadsheet. I hope this video has helped you. Take care and goodbye.